My name is Average Joe, and I'm a proud geek with expertise in movies, superheroes, and animation. My name is Beef Pork Ribs. I'm a fine repository of esoteric knowledge, which I suppose most people would qualify as geeky. Though I dabble in many fandoms, my main areas of expertise are anime, movies, and Belgian comics, with a strong recent insurgency of D&D. Our mission is to bring nerd and geek culture to the masses. By sticking it all under the microscope. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Bat Jar, Jar Podcast. Podcast. Movies, comics, graphic novels, TV, cartoons, animation, nerds, their geeks, entertainment, culture. Hear it on the Bat Jar, nerdy pal. Nerds and geeks, come gather around the scene. Come and join us in the Bat Jar. Come and tune in to Average Show and his team. Lots of here in the Bat Jar. When the newest nerdy news drops, these caught us pals, put it under the scope. DC, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, cinematic, multiverse. Hello there, and welcome to the Bat Jar Podcast, where we put nerd and geek culture under the microscope. It's a hairy microscope. Uh, did you not clean it before you used it last? Well, I mean, Logan was underneath it, so. Uh, wait, wait, is this another big microscope? Because to fit a whole person under it, it was must have been a big microscope. Well, I mean, it's Wolverine. He's pretty short, right? Ah, uh, ah. Well, uh, that's uh, very clever, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for people who don't know, our, our episode today is talking about the solo Wolverine movies. So, these are movies that feature Wolverine as a solo character, as the star and not part of the X-Men. And the joke, of course, there... Well, actually, you know what, before Ribs, you explain it. The joke about him... Oh, well... I kind of said it. Wolverine is short. I mean, in the comics, at least, which was one of the big things when Hugh Jackman was announced as Wolverine, they're like, but he's too tall to play this role properly. It'll be weird because it won't be short Wolverine. And But yeah, no, he still managed to have this kind of dynamic with other characters where they're like, I don't know, they, they don't look down at him for his short stature, which is something that kind of happens in the comics, but then they regret it. But there's still enough like disdain for him uh in the other movies especially like with scott to, to to make it work i think i said i would check in on how my move is going this is now it's been one week since i've been here i'm recording from a different room um sitting on a couch which i think is like the first time i've ever no that's not true i have recorded from a couch before when i've been at other people's houses to record but this is my first time recording from a couch in my own home it probably doesn't mean anything different for you guys who are listening to this, but it's it's, it's new for me and my experience. I'm a little more cozy than I would normally be. And I'm actually like in a room with a view. I'm looking into my backyard right now. So if I uh, if I get distracted, you know, you, and you hear like long chunks of silence, it's probably because I'm just looking at the trees. But hopefully that's not the case. Uh, I still am getting adjusted to this place and that'll, I'm sure it'll take a while, but Beef Pork Ribs, you have more experience moving than I do, so how long do you find it usually takes you to get accustomed to a new place? Uh, that's a loaded question. I I don't know if I can honestly answer that, because it's a weird thing. I lived, like, when I moved for the first time, I was four, and I don't remember where I lived before, but then I lived in the same house for 17 years, and I don't think I've, like... The only place I kind of felt like I was settled in was the place I lived for three years. Everything else kind of never really got to the point where I was like, yeah, this is home now. So I don't know. It it, it could take a while, but I think it depends. I, I think it, it usually tell, it takes me, though, at least a good eight months to stop feeling weird about it. Okay. So I've got quite the, the road ahead of me getting accustomed and... In that same vein, you are also moving in less than a week now, so are, you're all ready to go, everything's all set? More or less. It's it's an interesting process because because of COVID, you can't just have one big going away party, so it's like a lot of individual small hangouts, mostly outside, because that's easier to social distance and to not go into other people's homes. Uh, but also, I hate summer and all forms of heat. Uh, so it's been uh, quite an experience trying to do that. 
Well, we're now in what's called phase three for Ontario. So we can have 100 people together outside. And I'm, my backyard would not be able to fit 100 people social distanced. But we could probably fit like maybe like at least 10 to 12 people. So just putting that out there if we find a time that works before it's all said and done. Yeah, the problem is I think I have maybe one morning right now that neither me or my fiance aren't seeing people. So it's uh, it's it's been quite a process trying to put in all those things. And obviously, if somebody is feeling sick a week before, you're like, well, OK, get yourself tested. Maybe we can try to reschedule, but uh, we're doing what we can. And I think it is one of the nice things about well, one of the nice things, one of the small a uh, ray of sunshine in this uh, or silver lining on this definite huge dark cloud is that, well, people have gotten more used to having kind of a online presence or doing meetings. You know, you and I have played Dungeons and Dragons online. I've done it with a few other people. Um, people are getting, you know, watching movies, like one person streaming it and the other person's on a video conference. Like there's a lot more of that that's been done recently. So I feel pretty confident I'm not going to lose touch with people but at the same time it would be really nice to see uh everybody you know in person before leaving but at this point I've kind of given up on that plan in other news my uh, dad just retired after 34 years he's retired from from work uh and it's kind of weird to think about having a parent who's retired it's something I haven't experienced yet so this past weekend, I was with my parents uh, at their campground celebrating his retirement. We went golfing this morning, not because he's retired. We've always enjoyed golfing. And my big win from today is I did not lose a single ball, which might sound silly, but the golf course we were playing at, it's kind of out in the bush. And so every hole has like woods on either side. And so if you don't hit the ball straight, you're going to go looking in the woods for your ball. And often it's hard to find the darn things. But I did not go into the woods once, and I played the same ball all nine holes. So that's my that's my win from today. Uh, I'll consider that an accomplishment. I've never played golf, so I can't really judge. Not even like Wii Golf? I've played mini golf quite a bit. So Beef Pork Ribs, we are here today to talk about Wolverine and his solo movies. Now on this podcast, we have talked about the X-Men films very early on. We did a whole episode on Wolverine as a character and how he's actually from Canada at some point as well, but you weren't part of those conversations. So let's do your secret origin segment for Wolverine. How were you first introduced to the character of Wolverine, aka Logan? Oh man, I'm not entirely certain. It would, there, there, there's two possibilities. I'm not sure which one came first. Uh, I do think the um, X-Men movie with Hugh Jackman might be the first, uh, but it was at a time where I didn't watch a lot of movies in English because my English wasn't great. And I feel like that was one of those, you know, when like sometimes you go, uh, you go over to a friend's house and like there's, different people doing different things and one of them is a movie and I feel like that's how I first watched the first X-Men movie was like partially because it was kind of there and I didn't follow the whole thing. Hey, hey, it's me. Prove it. You're a dick. Okay. And because I don't, like I do remember that when I, I watch, like I rewatched the X-Men movies, um, Later on in life, I think the first one, the first one I remember watching was X2, which was amazing because, you know, the opening scene with Nightcrawler, probably one of the best opening sequence of any, you know, superhero movies. But I did remember, you know, Wolverine from that movie quite well. But uh, he was also, I believe, in the Secret War comic, which is the first like full comic uh, story arc that I ever read. Uh, But he was kind of just like with the X-Men. Um, so it wasn't really him. It was one of those weird things. I think he was in it. Um, so I, I, I didn't have like a big grasp on the character. It came mas- mostly from the movies. Reading some of the comics came later as my little sister got more into comics. But uh, yeah, that's that's how I got to know uh, the Wolverine. And it's been so long, so I'll say it for myself. It was the X-Men animated series from the 90s where I was first introduced to just the whole idea of the X-Men 
and Wolverine was in that team, and he was my favorite character, partially because he looked like Batman. You know, like the like the child in me said, "Oh, that guy looks like Batman," even though he's wearing mostly yellow. His head looks like Batman. He's a he short Batman, and he had the claws, and the claws just seemed really cool. And I've been t- like attached to Wolverine since I was a little kid, and I'm always interested to see like where they take him in the movies and in the shows and everything else. You are searching for me? Nah. Looking for a moment alone. We are like you and I. Angry at the world. And ourselves. My pain drove me to seek God. Yours drove you away. Don't tell me about God. What kind of God would let men do this to me? Our ability to understand God's purpose is limited. But we take comfort in the fact that his love is limitless. <laughs> I used to buy into all that, but I've lived too long, and I've done too much. So there you go. Secret origin segment, short and sweet this week. I think this topic was actually originally put in the bat jar because Asian John openly said in one episode that he hated the movie The Wolverine. And I really wanted to have an opportunity to kind of rebuke him or to speak against him on that. And so that's why it went into the bat jar to talk about The Wolverine movies. And at that point, I don't even think Logan had actually come out yet. So we weren't even at that point. Again, this is this podcast has been going on for almost four years. So keep that in mind. Like Logan was not even a thing when we first started recording. So this idea has been in the batch hour for a long time. I think it's a long time coming. And there are essentially three movies that have been made to date that are in, a, in most senses, Wolverine solo movies. Like Hugh Jackman is the top build actor and Logan is the main focus of the film. And they're not a trilogy. Like they are not three parts of the same story. They just happen to be three separate films that feature the same character as the main focus. There's a bit of an argument that can be made that the latter two are connected because they have the same director. We'll get into that a bit. But all that to say, just because we're talking about three different movies today that, and it's not one narrative, I think the best way for us to kind of talk about these movies is to go, of course, in chronological order, but talking about it by emphasizing the thing we liked the most about the movie, the thing we liked the least about the movie, and if there's anything specific that sticks out to you about that movie. Okay, I like this style. I will just say, though, before uh, we go uh, much further uh i i don't know if uh you're necessarily going to get uh better than agent john asian john uh for the wolverine because i also did not like that movie at all so just giving you the heads up as it were well i'm getting ahead of myself here let's just talk about the wolverine character for a moment so I guess for you, B4 Cribs, do you, A, do you like Wolverine as a character? And B, if so, what do you like about him as a character? Um, I will say I do like Wolverine as a character. Um, I There's a few things that I, I like. I like the kind of... Um, so I have this... I, I have a particular love of, of characters that are either fully or functionally immortal. Uh, especially those who are very old. And that was something that I always liked about um, Wolverine was that he's he's significantly older than pretty much anybody he knows except for Apocalypse. But like um, he he has lived through a lot of things, and the way that that affects a person and the way that it kind of like changes uh, who they are is something that I, I really like. Um, the other thing, I mean, look, the, the rule of badass. He he is definitely up there as just pure cool and awesome um whether in the comics or in the animated series or even you know in the movies like wolverine is the coolest guy around it's one of the reasons why they marketed so many like x-men thing as x-men and wolverine because it was like yeah the x-men are great but people like logan they like wolverine generally more than they like the x-men so um yeah rule of cool the um the fact that he's very old i was never that big on the like lost memories or any of that or the fact that like he is he has a certain complexity to him but it's not 
it is partially superficial um i find like it's something that could that is dug a little bit more in the comics and the movies it's a bit more like yeah he, he's got feelings but i mean it's not anything that's incredible it's very like out there especially like big rage or big moments but um, not necessarily as subtle as i'd like so i i'm also i mean i I said earlier i'm a fan of wolverine as a character and so my attachment to the character and like how i feel about the character informs how i feel about each of these movies so you know i I think the theme you would agree we would agree that with the x-men in general is that most of the characters experience that feeling of isolation and feeling different from other people and feeling like an outcast and so like for Wolverine as a character, he is very much an outcast because kind of like Captain America, he's a man at a time. He's uh, a soldier, a veteran, a person who has, as you say, lived through so much. And yet he finds himself among people who are so different from him, even among mutants, even among like the X-Men. There's really no one like him who's had his kind of life experience. So he is like an outcast among outcasts. And it doesn't, you know, he he puts on the personality of like the gruff exterior of someone who doesn't care. So he kind of distances himself from other people and really forces himself into that lone wolf loner persona that doesn't help his cause. But I think the thing I've always appreciated most about Wolverine is kind of related to the amnesia. Is this the, the, the tragedy of his character? The fact that not only did he have this horrible injustice, put upon him when he was experimented on and given the metal in his skeleton, but that the trauma of said experience also like took away all his memories and that for decades he went around not knowing who he was or only remembering very brief glimpses of what his life had been like. I I found the, the tragedy of, you know, this man who had fought so hard and couldn't recall who he was like the lost identity. And then his attempts with the X-Men to try and, make a new identity for himself. I always found that very interesting. And I found that I would almost go as, I mean, it's weird to say that Wolverine's a noble character because he does go around like slashing people to death with his claws, but he does have a certain amount of like nobility about him uh, in the way he carries himself. And I've always found that very interesting. Yeah, I can see where, like, like I, I said, like I don't particularly personally like that aspect of his character, but I do see the appeal in it for sure. So here we go. Uh, if you have not seen any of the movies that we're talking about today, we're going to go full spoilers here. I'm not going to put spoiler warnings in the in the show notes. Just accept the fact that we're going to talk about things that happen, especially the highs and the lows. So get ready. Uh, we're going to start, of course, with the first solo Wolverine movie that came out, which was called X-Men Origins Wolverine. My whole life, I felt like an animal. And she came along. I'm done. When they took everything he loved, he became everything they feared. You're gonna die for what you did to her. We all got a choice, son. Now mine got taken. And that won't ever happen again. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Ready PG-13. Yep, I actually shamefully saw this movie in theaters. As people may remember, Fox made their first X-Men movie in 2000, and then sequels in 2003, and then in 2006. And the one they made in 2006 was literally called The Last Stand. They intended it to be to be the final X-Men movie, because it's like they were telling their trilogy. But then, in the years following the release of that X-Men movie, Marvel Studios became a thing. And Iron Man came out, and they, they kind of rolled out this whole phase for this shared universe. And Fox uh, kind of panicked because they held the movie rights to the X-Men, and their contract said that they had to essentially keep making movies about the X-Men in order to maintain those movie rights. And Fox knew that if they stopped making movies, Marvel would take the characters and incorporate them into their shared universe they were building. But they had kind of written themselves into the, a corner because the third film, The Last Stand, as you would imagine, had a very clear sense of finality to it. Several characters either died or lost their powers. So they it kind of made it very hard for them to continue telling the story. So they had this idea of doing prequels. And they said, well, we'll do movies that are like, 
prequels about each individual character who was popular in the original movie. So two projects that were put into production right away were X-Men Origins Wolverine and X-Men Origins Magneto. Because those were two characters that had histories that were touched upon in the X-Men trilogy but weren't necessarily fully fleshed out. Well, X-Men Origins Wolverine was put into production first because, of course, Wolverine, at least the way they used him in the movies, was the main character, and he's arguably the most popular X-Men character. So they put that movie into production first, and during the development of X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, what X-Men Origins Magneto essentially turned into what we know as X-Men First Class. They kind of turned it more into a prequel about both Magneto and Professor Xavier. And thank God and, they did, because I feel like a Magneto solo movie, like, it could have worked, but uh, First Class was great, and it was, it kind of saved those movies, I mean, until Apocalypse. And I'm, I'm only going to defend this movie very briefly to say, part of adding the X-Men Origins onto the title of Wolverine meant that the studio... F- I, I don't know if this was something they had to do legally or something they felt they needed to do, but they felt the need to include as many other mutant characters or as many other X-Men characters in the movie as possible. And so you'll you see in X-Men Origins Wolverine a lot of X-Men characters making cameo appearances or, or have like recurring roles in the movie that seemingly are unimportant and, in all honesty, takes away from the focus of Wolverine as a character. And before Gribbs kind of alluded to this, X-Men Origins Wolverine is well known for not being a very good movie. So let's just get right into this, before Gribbs. What is the thing you despise or dislike the most about this particular movie? Well, there's a few things. One of them is like, it's one of those hindsight things. Um, And I think for people who follow kind of the history of Deadpool as a character, and especially the movies... Uh, Ryan Reynolds was Deadpool in this movie, but it was um, a terrible, terrible version of Deadpool. Like, it was this weird thing because he was he was in there and he was great at the beginning of the movie as like being pre dead, like pre Deadpool. Um, like, it, it's a it's a, it's a role Ryan Reynolds is just born to do, I think. Um, but then at the end, it was horrible, so horrible in fact that he alludes to it in the uh, in the. Uh, the Deadpool movie, I think in hindsight, that is the worst thing is how dirty they did Deadpool in that movie and how terrible he was. Um, I think that other things, uh, which you touched on is like, they tried to cram so many characters, but most of them, it didn't turn out very well. I mean, they took out like one of the comic favorites and, you know, the guy who's, uh, almost always with Wolverine, they take it, they decided to give Gambit a role, but it was more of a cameo than a role. And I feel like, Especially in a Wolverine origin movie, um, you could have done so much more with the character of Gambit, who is like basically the only friend Logan has or Wolverine has in the comics for a large part, partially because they have similar tastes um, in kind of uh, yeah, exorbitant uh, lifestyle at times. But also, um, yeah, it just it seemed like it was a little scattered, a little too scattered around. The story wasn't amazing either um they tried to introduce so many things um they had a bad cgi um patrick stewart arriving at the end um and they they kind of i don't know it it was kind of a mess and the other problem is even now when you look at uh first class there are continuity uh discrepancies before between this movie and that one like um the age that uh, Emma Frost is because she's a full adult in first class, but in this she was like, she appears like at the very end in a kind of mutant factory as a child um, who's about the same age as most of the other ones. So it it feels like it, it, they were trying to do a lot of different things and most of them didn't work. Uh, also, the CGI got worse somehow for his claws, especially like they look so bad in that movie. And there were just moments that didn't add anything. Like they were like, Oh, this will look cool. And it looked cool, but it didn't add anything to the story. And I think somewhere in there, there could have been a good movie. 
especially if they would have focused on a few characters. Um, but I, I think I'll, I'll get to that more when I talk about the good things about this movie. But yeah, the worst thing about this movie, in hindsight, was Deadpool. Uh, the worst thing about this movie, the first time I watched it, was that uh, the story kind of went nowhere. And uh, yeah, Gambit was terrible. And it's unfortunate because Gambit's a great character. So I would also say the writing, or the story, if you will, is the worst thing for me about this movie. Because it takes such a great and iconic Wolverine story, and it turns it into this very almost like stereotypical kind of revenge action movie. It, it almost feels like Commando or one of those Schwarzenegger movies where it's like, I'm retired, or I'm out of service, and it's like, your country needs you. We need you to come back and do a thing for us. And and then there's like, yeah, there's like a whole death of a loved one in there, and, and it just... It just feels so. It feels like a very cliche, direct, almost like a direct-to-video action movie, like very by the books. Oh, this is totally what happened in this sort of movie kind of thing. And I feel like that does. I like the way you said it, it does Wolverine dirty in the sense that there is a really great story that's kind of buried in here, but then they decide to kind of overlay it with this very uh, cliche stock action movie kind of script it's almost as if they had like a filter that they stuck the the wolverine story they had an x-men filter they had to put it through to get all the x-men characters in and then they had like this action movie filter they had to put it through to make it fit the script of like what would a typical action movie look like yes and i think also like because the 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 x-men trilogy the original X-Men trilogy had done a really good job at like subtly hinting at um, a lot of things that had happened to Wolverine. And I feel like they just wasted a lot of opportunities to use some of that pre-existing material and kind of reincorporate it. And I know like, yeah, they didn't want to use all the same characters, but once again, they could have used a few characters focused on them and had a better story um, about that. Um yeah, like, yeah, the writing was horrible. Like, not just the death of the loved one as, like, a bad trope, but just, like, the way it played out. And we're, we're going into spoilers. The twist reveal, she was never dead, but then the double twist reveal. But she did actually love him and ends up, like, you know, making Stryker walk until he dies or something like that. Like, it was... And also, Stryker was a wasted character in that movie as well. Like, there were so many things that should have been better but ended up just being really bad and yeah like definitely the writing was a big part of it but i do also feel like well i guess it does fall into writing but yeah the story it was a movie without focus and kind of like it like if you look at just even just like the intro the introduction like the opening sequence was promising something that i think could have been a great movie or a great kind of concept or way to approach it but then they also had to add the memory loss and how it happened um which was done kind of clumsily and that's actually the thing i like the most about this movie is the opening sequence which i know it sounds bad it's like your favorite part of the movie is the beginning but actually i would have loved a whole movie that was about Wolverine and Sabretooth going through all these wars and their experiences that kind of formed them as brothers and as men fighting in these different conflicts and changing allegiances based on where they were and whatnot. And I would have loved that the movie actually just ended with him like, you know, going to join up with Weapon X and it's like, oh, okay, we know where it goes from there. I feel like that that like that opening like five minutes of the movie that shows him as like a kid and then them going through the wars that would be like a great short film that could easily just give you the close notes of who the character is and where he, you know, where, what he goes through leading into becoming the Wolverine we know today. I think that was the best part of the movie. And I think it's one thing that, I mean, the mistake is they should have made that the whole movie, but like I said, as a little short film, it was actually really good. Yeah. I mean, if we're, if we're getting into the good things about this movie, um, Sabretooth was way better than he was in the first X-Men movie. Like, I mean, there's no comparison, obviously, but Sabretooth was a relatable character. He had good motivation. He worked as a character, and the relationship between him and his brother worked. And yeah, I mean, I don't... 
I don't think I'd necessarily go as far. I, I would totally watch the movie, just those two actors playing those characters going through it and have that kind of be their origin story and maybe add in a few things about, you know, a bit more about why they kind of went their own way instead of having a short film. Like, yeah, that would be great. And then, you know, uh, and with Weapon X, maybe a little bit of it. Um, yeah, that, that would have been that would have been cool. But also, even just if the main focus of the movie would have been the relationship between the two brothers not necessarily as like oh no he killed my wife so now i need to kill him because yeah like you said that was just kind of tired and cliched but like there was enough synergy between the two of them like they could have pitted them against each other differently and i mean saber tooth is the reason why he goes he undergoes the surgery to get the adamantium into his bones and like you know it could have been a really cool like trying to live up to your brother and again i think like the final scene between them after they defeat deadpool in a kind of deus ex machina was also like it was good anytime those two interacted i i felt like it was it was a better movie and again had the movie been kind of focused on wolverine um saber tooth and a better gambit I think it would have been a great movie or it could have been a great movie. I don't think, I don't think there was any way to redeem it completely at this point, but like that would have already just made the basic principle more interesting and less uh, something we've already seen before. And so I guess the final part we'll say is like what, after all this time, you know, this movie has been out for 11 years. What is it that stands out to you the most about X-Men Origins Wolverine? Wasted potential, but also the danger of rushing and trying to do something just to kind of grab in. Because, like, it's sad. Fox had good ideas, and, like, uh, if if only they'd started with First Class instead of this movie, that might have been a lot more respectable and respected, because that was a good movie, because they kind of put... It felt like the the effort was put into it, whereas this movie just felt like it was done for the sake of doing a movie. Yeah, I think what stands out to me after all this time is it's just another example of how studio meddling always makes a bad movie. You know, there's lots of examples of this, but this is certainly one of the, I guess, earlier ones. And it it stands out as like a perfect example of these non-Marvel Studios movie companies trying to desperately hold on to the movie rights of the characters they had. And you know what? Like, end result in 2020 now, Fox is owned by Disney. so their efforts were for naught because now Marvel owns Fox, which owns the X-Men. So we'll see the X-Men, the MCU anyway. Uh, And so everything that this movie was trying to do in terms of trying to maintain movie rights worked for a while, but in the long run didn't work out. And X-Men origins Wolverine, it actually does have like a post credit scene uh, where it mentions him going to Japan And so people, you know, like this was in 2009, that was certainly the era where people were like sequel baiting in their movies. And so fans of Wolverine from the comics would know that there actually is like a very, there's a very like a a Wolverine mini series that kind of like documents his time before joining the X-Men after getting his claws where he goes to Japan and he falls in love with someone. And there's a whole arc that his character goes through in Japan before coming back to America and joining the X-Men and all that. So even that little bit in trivia, or him saying that line about going to Japan, it made fans interested in seeing another movie about Wolverine, assuming that it was going to fill in the gaps about him going to Japan. Probably, I guess, again, like in the same sense of it being a prequel, before he goes and joins the X-Men, or before the first X-Men movie. But, you know... X-Men Origins Wolverine did not do well critically or commercially, and that kind of forced Fox to rejig their efforts. They turned, they made First Class, and around the time First Class came out, they started working with a director named James Mangold, who I'd never heard of before he was attached to directing a Wolverine movie, to do a new Wolverine movie. And I think the only direction he was given was like, it has to have Wolverine, and it has to have him going to Japan. And so... More more information was coming about the movie. It was determined that actually, unlike the f- previous film we talked about that was set before the original movies, is that 
James Mangold movie was going to be set after the original trilogy. And then it was going to involve Wolverine returning to Japan after everything that had, he'd experienced in the original trilogy. So as more and more news came out about this movie, I remember being very excited about it. I remember being very intrigued by the idea of a Wolverine movie set in Japan. I wasn't sure, I wasn't super familiar with the comic book storyline where Wolverine goes to Japan. Uh, but there had been a great episode of the animated series where he went to Japan. So I was, I was interested nonetheless. And at this point I was getting into anime more. So I was certainly like, yeah, like let's see Japan. That'd be cool. And so in 2013, we got the Wolverine. The Wolverine. Destined to live forever. Don't be so sure. Healing. His flesh is weak. Now you die. Not today. The Wolverine. Yeah, I also saw that movie in theaters, actually. And, like, okay, it is definitely way better than uh, Origins, so. Uh, but I still. I think. I might have to watch it again, to be fair. But I feel like it was like it fit better into the narrative. But I think it also this movie was made better by Logan existing. I think part of it like and maybe I don't know if this was part of the decision, but I feel like it might be like part of the decision of make setting it after is that, well, whether you like it or not, Hugh Jackman is getting older. And even though Wolverine technically doesn't age, this movie started to touch on you know, reasons why he might be aging or things that might uh, help facilitate that, um, which I, I guess we'll get into a bit more when we talk about the movie. But I think that, like, yeah, it's a movie that I did not like upon first watching. I was like, ah, uh, it, it didn't do much for me. It didn't. Uh, there were a lot of things about it that I thought were too much of a half measure to be like to, to make it a, a kind of good solid movie like it was it was one of the it was a good action flick it was a decent wolverine movie but it still felt in the same way that um x-men origin wolverine was that it was just kind of a movie that was there to be there that there wasn't the same level of kind of like love or um dedication that was put into like first class or days of future past or even like the original X-Men movies, it was just kind of like there so that we could have this movie and so that it could exist. Um, it definitely had better character development for Wolverine um, and it was less clumsy in a lot of way, but I also felt like it just, it, it still fell short from what it could have been. Well, you're not really holding any, pulling any punches here. So, you know, let's just go straight into what, what is like the biggest thing that didn't work for us. I think the biggest thing that didn't work for me was that it was trying to do a character redemption arc, but based on a movie, A, that was a really long time ago, and also, like, I felt like the movie was a little wishy-washy about how Logan felt about what he'd gone through in Last Stand. I mean... I, it's, we're not talking about Last Stand. It has a bad reputation. It wasn't a great movie, but I still, I did think that Last Stand had some amazing moments in it. And, you know, the moment where he loses Jean Grey um, at, towards the end and the moment, like there were good moments in it. And I think you could carry over the trauma of that. But what I didn't like is that he, he fluctuated between being, yes, I want to die and no, I'm not going to die. And, because that was pretty central to, you know, what was going on. It's like, would he give up his power, live a normal life? And he's like, yes, but no. And I do understand that it was like, yes, psychologically he wanted to die, but then realized he had somebody he could protect and fall in love with again. Um, and I think it made a weird callback to his love in origin. Um, I can't remember, but I feel like it did that. Um, but on the whole, it just felt like the story was a little too clumsy and like trying to focus on the emotional, which is not a bad thing, but to the detriment of logic and actual plot. So I do really like this movie. 
But I will admit the biggest flaw is the third act, specifically the way they chose to incorporate the silver samurai as a character into the film. It, it, it totally just doesn't work. They have this giant like man inside a robot suit just because like, oh, it's the third act of the movie. We've got to have someone for him to fight. And just the way it just it comes out of left field, it feels like it's from a different movie, and it's it, it is it is very clumsy, unfortunately. Like it, it's a movie that for the first two thirds I was super invested in, loved what they were doing, I enjoyed it, and then all of a sudden there's a robot, and it's like, what? Why is there a robot here? Like, it makes no sense. And while I like kind of like I wish I could just sort of cut that like ten fifteen minutes out of the movie. Because I think the rest of the film, like it would, it would work fine without that. But yeah, that's definitely what doesn't work for me. But let's try and be positive. I know, you, you, like again, I like this movie more than you do. But like, what is the thing that you like the most about the Wolverine? I like that it was. I mean, in hindsight, I like that it did set up a lot of things that paid off in Logan, and that it was starting to show the. I don't want to say. V- vulnerable not in the sense like not the emotional vulnerability of logan necessarily but his physical vulnerability and how it does make him emotional or psychologically vulnerable and how because there's a lot of his character that is like like that was portrayed as more or less completely unflappable but then super desperate and this wasn't necessarily like nothing hurts me and now everything hurts me. It did feel like there was more justification in why he could be hurt. And also, again, the thing I like a lot about Logan is, you know, how do immortals deal with living forever? And this movie did dwell into that. And I did really appreciate that aspect of it. Um, And, you know, the idea that he was looking at uh, at it as a curse. Uh, I liked the, the, I I really very much did enjoy the, like, Logan being an angry old man in the wood at the beginning. We talked about the opening sequence for uh, Origins. I, I like the opening sequence for this one as well, where he was like, you know, he's like a woodsman living out and, you know, befriending bears and getting angry at, you know, hunters who uh, don't respect nature. So I like that. Um, but once again, like, and I like what it could have been setting up, but it took a while for that to pay off with Logan. And a lot of other things that they did kind of try to set up in the movie never paid off um, in other movies or in other franchises, which is kind of unfortunate. I think the thing I appreciate most about The Wolverine is how much more character-focused it is than Origins. Origins is very plot-focused, and it's like moving everyone from A to B, and the characters are there to serve the plot. But The Wolverine is very much a character piece. It, it The characters are what's most important. The story is there to kind of service their development. So certainly everything you said about his immortality, I loved that. But even the side characters, like characters we were meeting for the first time in this movie, I was interested in what was happening with with uh, with Mariko and, and even the old man. And I can't remember her name, but the girl who had the sword. I was interested in their stories and how they like contrast with what Logan was experiencing. So that's certainly what I appreciate the most about the movie. But in hindsight, again, what stands out to you the most? It's been seven years now since the Wolverine came out. What 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 do you what stands out to you the most about this movie? I, I think honestly, kind of like what you said, it's the third act sucked, and like you know, not just uh, the Silver Samurai, but also um, uh, Doctor Green, like being a surprise well a not surprising surprise villain at the end that really didn't do much other than essentially enable a girl on girl fight which i mean you know didn't seem like it was needed in this movie um and so like i feel yeah it was it was something that was that again had high hopes and i feel like it's it's a common thread well just for these two at least like it starts really strong but ends really poorly and yeah the the thing that stands out the most to me is that this was almost a good movie like i i i did want i wanted to like it a lot when i was watching it and afterwards i like i still want to like this movie more than i do but i just feel it had too many flaws especially at the end and I think what stands out to me the most after all this time is the setting. The fact that it does take place in modern day Japan and that most of the actors are people I'd never heard of before, before like Hugh Jackman 
and Famke Jensen as like Jean Grey's ghost were the only actors I'd heard of before this movie came out. And I've now seen some of these actors in other movies and shows. So it just, it stands out to me. It's like, yeah, this was a movie set in Japan. And I I can remember like pieces of architecture and the food and, and just things I'd seen in animated form in various anime shows. But then it was like my first time seeing those different things in live action uh, and just also like kudos to the studio for kind of going out and like getting authentic Japanese actors to play these parts uh, who were, you know, unknowns. There were people like, and I, this movie in the end, it did sort of well financially and it did really well, like critically people seem to really like it critically, but it didn't do super well financially. And I don't know if like you could argue the lack of star power was part of it or that if people were just kind of tired of Wolverine movies at that point. It's hard to say, but Certainly the setting is what stands out to me the most. I think it definitely did have a lot to do with people. Like, I, I think this movie did suffer from how bad um, X-Men Origin Wolverine was. That is a good point. And uh, speaking of other movies, there's like a mid credit scene in The Wolverine where he runs into Professor Xavier and Magneto. And it's not really clear how that actually ties into Days of Future Past, but it was meant to allude to the fact that Days of Future Past was happening. And so, you know, next year, Days of Future Past came out. It kind of reset the whole X-Movie timeline. And then Apocalypse came out and ruined it all again. Uh, And then they announced that they were going to do another Wolverine movie. And it was announced that it was going to be Hugh Jackman's final performance as the character. And in the same sense that the Wolverine took inspiration from the Japanese Wolverine storyline. They, it was announced that this final Wolverine movie was going to be an adaptation of old man Logan, which is a comic book run where it's like a post-apocalyptic world. And because he's Wolverine and he ages slowly, he's like one of the old, he's one, he's really old. He's one of the only people that's still around, uh, I'd never read it, but I was certainly familiar with it. So the idea that, oh, they're going to try and adapt that as a story, it was seemed very interesting to me. And I was, and then I found it was going to be rated R because Deadpool was so successful. And I said to myself, oh, like, it's very interesting that they're actually going to try and do this movie as an R rating and that they're going to try and do Old Man Logan because like a lot of storylines that they've done in the MCU, Old Man Logan has a lot of cameos from other Marvel characters in fact, like his, uh, I think there's like a blind Hawkeye who's like one of his companions in the movie or in the, sorry, in the comic book version of Old Man Logan, which they obviously they wouldn't be able to do in this movie because they were being owned by different studios. So all I have to say in 2017, we got the to date final Wolverine movie, the final appearance by both Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart in their X-Men roles with Logan. Logan, this is the mutant that I told you about, Charles. Hasn't been a new one born in 25 years. She's like you, very much like you. She needs our help. I'm not whatever it is you think I am. Someone come along. Someone has come along. You have something that belongs to me. I need the girl. Yeah. You still have time. Logan. Yeah, this movie, I think it was interesting because there's this thing I've been saying for a while. Um, I don't know if I ever said this on the podcast, but um, I wish Arnold Schwarzenegger would do a King Conan movie because it is a series of comics about Conan the Barbarian when he's the old and great king. And I think it was great that they did do that with Logan, like old man Logan, because, yeah, I mean, Hugh Jackman isn't as old as he looks in the movie, but like he is getting older and older to still try to like do prequels and like reboots, which like even in days of future past, his presence was a little bit weird and it's like, yeah, okay, but he's supposed to look younger, but he looks older, especially when he's shirtless. It's like, Oh yeah, that's, that's not the same guy anymore. Uh, But yeah, I, I was really excited about this movie and um, I did not like I, I knew the comics existed. I knew more or less how they handled them, um, which also had me a little bit nervous because it's hard with like 
like the way the MCU had tried to do certain comic arcs like Age of Ultron and um, Civil War. I mean, Civil War was a great movie. It had nothing to do with the Civil War comic arc, thankfully, because the well, A, you can't do that without the X-Men, and B, it would have been horrible if they tried. And Age of Ultron also had nothing to do with the Age of Ultron uh, storyline, but then also sucked as his movie. So I was a little bit nervous about that. But then again, this movie... Uh, a lot more than the other two, and I guess I'm going into maybe the thing I like the most about it already, is that it was treating, like, there was genuine, there seemed to be genuine care about the characters, and about the story, and about the universe. And it was really set out to do something. To, to, to do, so, like, it knew what it was trying to do. It was trying to, and it was also trying to close off the run of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, because despite the the other two movies not being great and despite a lot of controversy that was on and off about his height about how he portrayed the character i think to you and me and to most people our age and to a lot of other people he is kind of the epitome of what wolver like when you think of wolverine a lot of people will think of him and then the animated series but he has kind of become more or less synonymous with that character and i think it's really good that they took the effort to continue the good character building that had happened in uh, the Wolverine, but now to also have kind of a, a very well-crafted storyline that also um, like the Wolverine again, included the future and kind of the idea of like old man, Logan or Logan, who's taking care of the future generation. Yeah, we can switch it up. We'll talk about, well, first of all, Everything, well, not everything, but a lot of things about this movie are are great. Like, this is a very great movie. It actually got nominated for an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay, if I recall correctly. And it, it is an excellent movie. It, like The Wolverine, and this is this film was also directed by James Mangold. So this is what I kind of meant when I said that they were kind of related. Because while, like, especially, like, the continuity and the timeline, and, like, you don't really understand how those two movies are connected. But you do get a sense of, like, the where the director wanted to go with the Wolverine character, there are some through lines between what's in the Wolverine and what's in Logan. And I feel like because, uh, because Deadpool was so successful, they were kind of like allowed to go darker and go where they wanted to go. And yeah, it's, it's again, it's a, it's a movie where it's character focused and not, and, and not to say like a movie can be plot focused and be good. It like, uh, you know, a movie does not have to be focused mostly on the characters to be a good movie. But this is a great example of a character led film. And I would say like, it's kind of like a, it's mostly the story of Logan and Laura. Like they're kind of the, they're the two leads of this film and everyone else is kind of just there to service their story. And yeah, I just loved the way that they portrayed Logan in the movie and they had, they, they did something. You see, you often see these movies about like some old veteran who's like, kind of like at the end of their rope and you, you see maybe like a flashback or you're told things about how great they are and how they fought in so many battles or wars. You know, you see this with like generals and movies with soldiers involved, but it worked on so many other levels with Wolverine in this film, because we had seen all these other movies. We'd seen all these other things he had gone through and like I can remember the moment vividly where he's like trying to uh, pull out his claw because he needs to clean off the blood on it and it won't come out on its own. He has to like pull it out. And because his healing isn't as strong anymore, it's actually hurting him to pull this claw out. And it was just like, for me, it was such a beautiful moment to like say like, this is how far this man has fallen in certain terms of like how, how weak he is and how like how tired he is. And it just, yeah, it did. Like that's just one example. Of, like a lot of things, this movie did really well. I, I think another thing that this movie did very well, um, and did much better than Origins, and I think arguably, in some sense, better than um, the Wolverine as well, was the side characters. Uh, you, you talked about how they were there to support the two main characters, but also they still worked as characters. Uh, I think, like, the Wolverine did a pretty good job with most of the characters being there and working, except for the villains, which were terrible. Um, but in this, and there were, like, a lot of th kind of throwaway henchmen 
that kind of just were there to make uh, Wolverine look cool. But in this movie, like every character did a really good job and it was a much smaller cast and that helped a lot, uh, I think, to focus what those characters were supposed to do and how good they were. Like, um, I can't really think of one character that was like, oh yeah, that one was kind of bad. Like everything, everybody worked and everything worked together, which I think is pretty impressive. Like the villain was great. He wasn't overbearing. Uh, He wasn't super well developed, but he didn't need to be either. He was very much a plot device, um, but not in the bad way, but in the, in the sense like that he had a clear mission and he executed it. And the like young Logan clone was actually like um if we talk about that like the cgi was not super horrible and worse than everything else was actually really good and used sparingly to make the movie better or to give a good experience of it so yeah i think i mostly have good things to say about it uh don't know what we're gonna do when it's time for uh for the the thing that bothered us i don't know is it time for that it's time for that so i'm just gonna say it in in a sense, it is. It's not the R rating itself. It's things that got into the movie because it had an R rating. I've found it often is the case with movie studios that when it's like, well, the movie's going to be R rated because of this thing, so let's just include other things that would get an R rating other, anyway because it's, we already got the R rating. So what do we got to lose? And so like, there's this one moment where like, there's you see a woman's chest and it's totally unnecessary. You see characters using like the f bomb. I would say unnecessarily. It just seems so weird. It's like, you know, like I get that Professor Xavier is supposed to be like senile, but like to see him, it just seemed very jarring. And then I want to, I would go as so far as say unnecessary. Like the and, and maybe that's because it's the one movie where these characters are speaking this way, but it just feels like so divorced from everything else um, because they are using like the foul language and. While I think the more gratuitous violence was actually like good, it kind of showed like how like Wolverine just doesn't care anymore. He's like, all right, I gotta get like these guys are trying to steal my car. I'm just gonna chop his arm off, and that'll kind of help him realize like get out of here instead of like trying to like hurt him, like impact him non lethally. Um, but there were even a handful of moments where I felt like the violence was like gory for the sense of well, we can because I got the R rating, and I know that's mostly a nitpick, but like that's kind of like what stands out to me as something that. I don't think landed well. Honestly, you basically stole what I was going to say. I when I I started thinking about it, it's like, yeah, Patrick Stewart was swearing too much as Charles Xavier. Like, I don't mind him dropping the f bomb here and there. Like, I think it was good that he was swearing, and like you said, he was going to see now, but it did seem to be a little exaggerated. But you're right; it is one of those things. Like, um, like I, I started Mjolnir, and I started watching the new Harley Quinn show, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but the, like the fact that it's like a mature cartoon they they kind of milk it sometimes like yeah that that didn't need to be there so i get it look you're edgy but like there are some things that it's justified but others it's not and i think yeah there was a little bit of that but i definitely don't feel like again i you're right it's a bit of a nitpick i don't think it took out of the movie necessarily um like where there are, whereas there are some movie where it's like yep we're doing this for the r rating you're like yeah you did that 100 percent just for the r rating and it's like so jarring that you kind of breaks your immersion. I don't think anything in uh, Logan broke my immersion necessarily. And let's get into just to wrap up, like what stands out to us the most about the film? I mean, this movie is the newest one. It's only three years old at this point, but like before Gribbs, what stands out to you the most about Logan three years later? Well, I actually only watched Logan a year ago. <laughs> well, a little more than a year ago. Cause um, I watched it with near near, just before we started dating um and i think the thing that uh sticks out to me was kind of like that it was a good end to those characters and to those actors in those roles like i still (laughs) uh, i still haven't seen um uh not infinity wars the one after that end game uh, but a lot of people have described it to me as like it was a good ending, a good way to wrap up these characters and stuff and things like that. And so I'm like, I think that's what will stay with me is that Logan was a like the perfect way to see off both, you know, Patrick Stewart as um, 
as uh, Charles Xavier. As too bad we didn't get Magneto in it; would have been cool, but wouldn't have made sense. Um, and Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I think this is kind of copying what I said about the last movie, but it's the, it's the setting and the world building this film did that really stands out to me. Like thinking about it, the fact that it is set like twenty or thirty years in the future after all the other X Men movies. And that they like kind of like wrote in this explanation as like where all the other mutants have gone and like how they've all and like how Xavier's in the condition he's in and how like the a myth had kind of built up around the X Men the fact that like people did start publishing comic books about them because the, you know they'd heard about these things that these mutants had done and it was like become like like folklore essentially I thought that was just really interesting and it was. It was their kind of attempt at trying to like get the movie to a similar setting than Old Man Logan, which again, because they didn't have all the characters, they couldn't just do Old Man Logan. And so, like, I, I don't know. It, it seemed kind of convenient the way that, like, you know, they set a lot of the movie like in the desert, so it looked like that it was actually like a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, but you know what? I, it, that's aside from like the swearing and the violence. That's what stands out to me uh, after all this time. And I'd say that because it's only been three years. But in summation here, you know, we have these three Wolverine movies. I, I think this is a rare instance in filmmaking where you have multiple films starring the same actor playing the same character that actually, as time went on, the films got better. It's 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 hard. It was hard for them not to get better after the first one. But yeah, it is true. It has it. They definitely kept getting better and they ended really well so it is it is a pretty impressive uh yeah it's a pretty impressive kind of setting especially considering that they were very disconnected from one another yeah i think even now i think the wolverine is actually like my favorite movie with wolverine as the main character i think i still prefer it to logan even though i would agree and i would i would accept the fact that on a technical level logan's a better film there's just something about I don't know, the way that that movie presents itself that I enjoy, for whatever reason, more than Logan. Yeah, I think, I mean, I still, I might actually rewatch The Wolverine at some point and change my mind a little bit, but I do remember quite clearly being disappointed after it. And, you know, maybe that's the thing, though, like you said, because the third act was so bad, if you only watch it once, that kind of just lingers with you, and maybe that's what's happening to me. But I definitely, like, and to be fair, I... I do remember watching X-Men Origin Wolverine and yeah, getting, I think again, part of the thing, I was so excited for the opening sequence and Sabretooth was great in it, but then it just kind of fell flat. So there you go. There has been our conversation on the Wolverine movies. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Let us know what you think because we have no mail. Once again, we would love to hear from you and you know, things are starting to opening up or in most places. So, you know, maybe you have less time to listen to podcasts or maybe you're actually like, on, you know, commuting to work again and you're actually listening to podcasts more. In which case, you know, please give us a listen. We'd love to hear from you. Send us emails and we'll remind you how to do that. If you want to reach the show, you can send us an email at batjarpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can tweet us at the bat cookie jar you can find the bat jar podcast wherever you listen to podcasts including youtube because we got a channel share our posts on facebook write reviews give our shows a rating this will help all people join us inside the bat jar and we appreciate it dearly so normally this is when we would go inside the bat jar to find out our topic for next week but i think before gribs you and i have decided we're actually going to take a week off because you're moving is that did we decide that officially yeah, because I'm not even sure I will have internet uh, next week. Uh, well, I mean, at some point in the next week I will, but I'm not sure that, yeah, I'll have internet in time for the podcast. So next week we're uh, going to have to take a break, but excited to be back after that um, because this has been a very nice exercise in uh, reminding me to not just hate on things that I hate and talk them about them a little more uh, objectively, as it were. Yeah, and us recording over Zencaster has been a good rehearsal, if you will, for your move, because effectively we're physically distancing and this the distance, the literal physical distance we're gonna be, you know, practicing will just be much larger than it was before. It won't affect using this online platform at all. 
So, even though there's not going to be an episode next week, it is going to be Comic-Con at home. And I, I have registered for it. And it, I, what I've found out is that basically the way that they're delivering all the panels and content is you sign into the Comic-Con website with like a Google account or like, you know, whatever kind of social account you want. And then you can build your calendar of all the events. And within the description for each event, there's a link to a YouTube channel. And the idea, I guess, is that if you go to the YouTube channel at that moment, like when that event is supposed to happen, you will indeed actually watch the video. I'm disappointed because it does seem that most of the panels and you know sessions are going to be pre-recorded, and they're basically just going to put them up on the channel at the specific time that they've allocated. So it doesn't seem like there's going to be as much direct interaction between like people watching and the presenters. Uh, but our next episode, which will not be this coming Monday, but the following Monday, will be covering Comic Con at home and just our well. At least mostly my experience attending uh, Beef Pork Ribs. You might, I'll send you a link to see if you, and I'll put a link actually in the description of the episode for people if they want to check it out because it's literally just watching YouTube. That's kind of the whole experience. So there might be discussions or some of the special events that people will be interested in, but we'll talk about the experience of Comic Con at home in our next episode. So again, we, no episode next week. It'll be like our summer vacation while Beef Pork Ribs moves moves out west but we'll be back in two weeks to talk about the Comic-Con at home experience. And until that time, I'm Average Joe. And I'm Beef Pork Ribs. Catch you on the flip side. Ching! That's the sound of my claws coming out. No, it's more like... I'm Old Man Logan. Ah!